Welcome to the Explosive Street Podcast with Jared Binney. On today's episode, I have eight-time Mr. Olympia, the one and only Lee Haney with me. All right. Uh, so um, we're going to get into Lee and how he kind of got started in lifting, talk about bodybuilding. We're going to talk about the Lee Haney games, or we're going to talk about his uh, book that just came out. So welcome, Lee. Well, thanks, man. Pleasure. Always a pleasure seeing you, my man. <laughs> <laughs> so how did, um, how did you get started in lifting? Uh, well, I started around the age of uh, 10, 11 years old. My parents uh, got me a set of weights for Christmas. You know, mm -hmm. I was always infatuated, infatuated with uh, the movies Hercules and Samson, all that oh, good yeah. stuff. And that's pretty much how I got going, man. Uh, first little deal with a plastic set of weights, you know, with the clay in it. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. The, the uh, York barbell set, mm -hmm. yep. you know, with the Charles Atlas uh, exercise guide or training guide inside of it. Mm -hmm. So that was the deal, man. Wanted to be Samson and Hercules. Yeah, you were lifted at 10, 11 years old. 10, 11 years old. You know, where you, of course, as a, as a, a, a trainer, you yeah. know, uh, particularly working with young people as you do, a lot of parents are scared to death mm -hmm. of l allowing their kids to start exercising early, mm -hmm. particularly when it comes to weight training. Huh. Uh, I started mounting when I was eight years old. Yeah, it didn't affect your height at all? No, nope. no growth well, from full scholarships, man. You know, so yeah. apparently it did something good for them. Yeah, the, uh, the National Strength Conditioning Association even says as young as six. Exactly. But, yeah. I, but I don't like them sometimes at six because the maturity level sometimes is quite exactly. high. Trying exactly. To, trying to you know, get them to pay attention, Yeah. those kind of things. And then yeah. some people are not as wise mm -hmm. as you or I would be about doing it. They mm -hmm. can, you know, our parents sometimes they get a little bit overly zealous mm -hmm. about seeing their kids become successful or trying to create athletes when it's really not athletes. Mm -hmm. you know, some kids are made for books. <laughs> some, you know, you, you, athletics is either born. Yeah. You, know, you can train them and make it better, but you either got it or you don't. Yeah, you got to fit the mold. You know, if you're if you're yeah. going to be five six, you're not going to be playing in the NBA. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so um, yeah, that's that's crazy. They even came out lately with research showing those who lift before puberty actually end up being two three centimeters higher than. Than some of the peers. Perfect. You know, it, it helps the body produce natural growth hormones. Mm -hmm. And then the other thing that it does too, it, it trains the mind. Yeah. You know, it's for discipline. Mm -hmm. uh, you, you, you know, I mean, every little boy want to be Superman. Okay. Every little girl want to be Superman. Yeah, no, no one wants to be weak. Hey, nobody. Yeah. And so when it comes to nutrition, they look at that a little bit differently. Mm -hmm. You know, as far as kids are concerned, so wow, man, it's Papa, he's Spanish. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to eat some. Mm -hmm. see. You know, he said he's strong to to the finish because he eat his spinach. <laughs> so all of these things are healthy for kids. Yeah. So um, start lifting. When did uh, when did you get in the bodybuilding? When did you start going competing? When did you know you had an act for? Well, when I was uh, 16 years old, I ended my first bodybuilding competition. Uh -huh. It was in uh, Spartanburg, South Carolina, the Mr. Uh, Mr. South Carolina, mm -hmm. and uh, I did very well in that show. I didn't place, but I had a lot of fun. and was told by the judges I had a lot of uh, potential. Mm -hmm. And from there, the book had taken its place, uh, had taken root in my heart. So mm -hmm. this is what I wanted to do and what I wanted to be. So did you grow up playing football and sports like that? Well, I started with bodybuilding first. You know, we played street football, yeah. street basketball, whatever. Mm -hmm. You know, growing up in the country, man, that's all we did all day long was play sports. Mm -hmm. But, uh, after, you know, I got into the training, ended my first bodybuilding competition, then I had one of the coaches see me in school and said, wow, son, do you play football? I said, no, sir, I don't. He said, well, listen, we'd love you to come out for the team. Yeah. And so I came out, you know, uh, JV, mm -hmm. of course I made it. Then from there, to, you know, I got more and more involved in the football and through junior high school, high school. And, but they needed a scholarship to Livingstone College in Salisbury, North Carolina. One of the first people in my whole graduating class to get a scholarship in football. So that strength ended up helping oh, a lot, didn't oh, it? Oh, it helped a lot, man. Education, the whole nine <laughs> y'all. <laughs> Started you off on the right track. That, that's kind of crazy how um, a lot of people get into strength training to do better in sports. That's right. You know, it, it connects itself to everything, you know, and where I'm now is just in this part of my journey, as it was for my kids. Both of them, when I say kids, my son is now 30. One, he finished mm -hmm. at the Citadel. Mm -hmm. He attended uh, Sandy, Sandy Creek High School, played football there. 
my daughter attended Sandy Creek, played volleyball there, mm -hmm. and then went on to graduate from SCAD, mm -hmm. both on full scholarship. I, I saved a ton of money because oh. of athletics. <laughs> then uh, academics, you know, you gotta have both of them. But the weight training, strength training has made all the difference and not only in my life, but also in the lives of my kids. Mm -hmm. And still today, you know, I, I'm still very much involved and passionate about what I do, mm -hmm. what I'm able to help others do. You know, from training uh, Evander Holofield to move from cruiserweight to heavyweight, I had to put weight on it, mm -hmm. and to make sure he, was, he remained explosive and powerful in doing so. So he went on to become a world champion. I worked with Gary Sheffield. I trained and worked with Shannon Shaw. Mm -hmm. You know, Big Fred Stokes, who played for New Orleans, the Saints at one time, Gerald Perry. So the list goes on um, as far as what strength training and weight training has done in my life and allowed me to do in the lives of others. How did you go from, well, for, for, let's start with uh, Mr. Olympia. Some people don't know what the Mr. Olympia is, right. you know, some of this younger generation. Right. Could, could right. you explain what Mr. Olympia is? Well, the Mr. Olympia, a lot of people are familiar, familiar with Mr. America, yeah. or Mr. Universe. Mm -hmm. Well, the Mr. Olympia is the, the top professional bodybuilding title in the world. Yep. Uh, when I was competing, you had the first, you got to first win a, a local competition, mm -hmm. which then opens the way for a, a state competition, mm -hmm. which I want, you know, the Mr. Uh, South or Mr. Palmetto or the Mr. George or Mr. South Carolina. And then you go from there to a regional competition. Mm -hmm. And a regional competition during that time would then qualify you for a national competition. Then from the national competition, which is like the NPC Nationals, it would then qualify you to compete on the, uh, at the world stage amateur, which is the IFBB World Championship during my day. Mm -hmm. And I won all of those different titles. And then, and only then, was I qualified to enter the Mr. Olympia competition, okay. which is the cream of the crop, consisting of, back then, of around 140 some countries. Right now, there's 191 countries mm -hmm. involved in the International Federation of Bodybuilding. And that's where I come from. That's where Arnold Schwarzenegger comes from. Mm -hmm. Lou Ferrigno, that's where I'm from. Corey Everson, yes. Carla Dunlap, Linda Merritt. It is the cream of the crop. Arnold won seven. Arnold won seven. And you won eight. I won eight in a row. And you and what, Ronnie Coleman? Ronnie Coleman tied my record. Uh, however, Ronnie tried to break it, but he fell short, and Jay Cutler he ended up dethroning him uh, at his ninth Olympia. Mm -hmm. That's a mean, long time bodybuilding. Long time, man. You know, I, I was in and out by the time I was 31. Mm -hmm. So it was my last competition. But Ronnie didn't win his first Mr. Olympia until he was 35. Whoa. So, uh, Man, he did it. <laughs> wow, that was incredible. Yeah. Go eight years, 35 plus eight. Mm -hmm. Hey, we talking, what, uh, 43? Yeah. Woo, I was long gone after that time. Yeah, did you ever compete against Arnold or was he already retired when you kind of started? Arnold was retired when I came. I mean, I was wearing Huggies. When he was still there. <laughs> yeah. I just won the G Days America in 1979 and I think Arnold retired in 1975. Okay. Yeah, so um, that's crazy. and. I, can't really see it, but Lee's sitting down right here. You don't have any problems with your joints. Oh no, and man! Walks, your your walking yeah. gait and everything's yeah. just fine after years and years of lifting. You're almost what? You're 59, about to be 60. Right, right? Mm -hmm. about to be 60. You know, one of my philosophies over the years, and and I didn't just think, I didn't just come up with this myself, mm -hmm. but having an opportunity to be around legends like Arnold, like uh, uh, Albert Beckel, and seeing some Evan Newt and. Uh, uh, you know, Frank Zane, and the, I mean, the legends of the sport, their philosophy was always to stimulate the muscle, mm -hmm. the mind and muscle connection, and rely heavily upon nutrition and training systems mm -hmm. in order to develop the physique. It's not an overnight process. Actually, you don't really get good until you reach your mid 30s or early 40s. Mm -hmm. That's when you the physique uh, matures, I mean, to a whole nother level. Mm -hmm. I was able to benefit from the wisdom of these these uh, legends because I read and followed their guidelines mm -hmm. at the early early stages in my life. Robbie Robson, in particular, was one of the people I always looked forward to, you know, looked to as far as advice and watching his routine. Mm -hmm. And of course, with Arnold, you know, all, all of this information was made available through uh, Iron Man magazine. Oh yeah, uh, Muscle Builder, Muscle and Fitness. 
was Flex still? Yeah, well, Flex hadn't, hadn't come around that hadn't time. Hadn't came around at that time. Mm -hmm. So you all, you would always find a wealth of knowledge at Muscle Training Illustrated with Dan Leary. Okay. So some incredible knowledge was made available there. And I applied that knowledge. As a result of that, you know, my training systems work to my benefit. Mm -hmm. You know, I have no joint problems, no yeah. knee, no back, no hip problems whatsoever. You know, I've avoided surgeries and tears, you know, but you look at that era of bodybuilding, the era, I said the era, Frank yeah, Colombo and yeah. Lou, they never tore muscles. You never heard of that. Yeah. You only hear about that in this modern day era where guys overtrain and rip them, rip their feet, them, their body parts, you know, uh, you know, turn themselves up. It's, it's all about being smart and being patient. That's it. And my philosophy has been trained to stimulate, not annihilate. Yeah. You know, because 70% of obtaining your goals is going to be what you eat, when you eat, how much you eat. So you're saying most of it's a lot of diet and nutrition. A lot of diet and nutrition and rest. You know, that's important. It doesn't take that much to stimulate a muscle. And uh, one thing I learned from uh, Fred Hatfield, you know, Dr. Squire. Oh, yeah. I love Fred, man. He would always say that more is not better. Better is better. That means being specific. And that's something that you teach here at Explosive Mechanics. Yep. You know how much to give and when to back off. Yeah, because I tell the kids, and sometimes the kids want more. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I said, it's not how much you do. That's right. It's how much you recover from. There you go. That's and, the name and, of the game. And so they're, they're there. And some of them will try to test me. All right, well, you want to do an extra set. Mm -hmm. We come in the next day when they're supposed to do legs again. Mm -hmm. They don't have it, <laughs> but sometimes, Jeez. sometimes you gotta let them realize. Realize, That's you know. Right. I, I try to tell you. You're just like when you try to tell your kids something, mm -hmm. they mm -hmm. go off and do it anyway. That's right. <laughs> they, they learn from that. <laughs> they learn. Re we try to recover and from aches and pains. They learn. Yeah. That's one of the best teachers. Yeah, and so the the, the experience that we've gained, we're just trying to pass on to others. That's what it's all about, you know. And that's that's one of the reasons why I created what is called the International Association of Fitness Science. Mm -hmm. It's the first certification program created by someone who has been there, done that, in my sport. Mm -hmm. You know, you look at all the different certification organizations out there, but nobody from the background of professional bodybuilding has ever created a certification program. Mm -hmm. I thought that odd. Oh, I said, well, guess what? I need to do that. Yeah. Being an eight-time Mr. Olympia, having, uh, a clear understanding of training system, of nutrition, th there you go. Mm -hmm. So I created uh, one which is called Ultimate Bodybuilding, that's for bodybuilding science. Mm -hmm. Then the other one is functional training. Yep. And you know, as you know, when you come to functional training, it all depends on the functionality of the athlete and what they're trying to achieve. Yep. Whether it's an athlete or whether it's a, a regular person. Mm -hmm. Most people I've trained now, the majority is just CEOs, mm -hmm. business people, ladies, you know, teachers, and they don't, they don't need functionality like Evander going and knock somebody's brains out in yeah. three minutes and recover in one. Yeah. They just want to look good, be functional, and uh, be healthy with blood flow and balance and stabilization, you know, a level of, of, of cardio conditioning, mm -hmm. strength. That's what they want. So that particular type of program adheres to the needs of the masses or you have ultimate bodybuilding that can adhere to the needs of someone who may want to compete mm -hmm. or want to train someone else to compete. Yeah, the, um, and that goes in, you've got the book, uh, Fit at Any Age, right? right. Yeah. Is that kind of where that's going to target? That's exactly where it, where it targets. The Fit at Any Age is for people uh, that align, with, that's within the age group of 45, particularly 50 and older, mm -hmm. where the goal is to train to stimulate, not annihilate. Yep to enhance functionality, age management fitness. That's what that one is all about. Mm -hmm. And I take great pride in that because, you know, the reality is the guys who follow me are now my age. <laughs> you know, I'm not trying to bench press 200 pounds. It's probably been, man, I don't think I've touched the bench maybe once, maybe twice a whole year because I use dumbbells more mm -hmm. because they they feel better for my shoulders. Mm -hmm. You know, the barbell don't hurt, but I know it can hurt. Yeah. So uh, it's all about functionality now, you know, and, and using those kind of movements that keeps me uh, functional. Mm -hmm. And with that, in the book, I talk about that. I talk a lot about the do's and don'ts. You know, like, okay, Miss Smith is, 
She's 50 years old. She don't need to do box jumps. Mm -hmm. Nor does she need to do walking lunges. She yeah. don't tear her knee up or injure her hips. Mm -hmm. So what can Ms. Smith do? So I show the different exercises or, or pass the bill. Mm -hmm. What should he be doing? So it, it cautions people to be aware of the cans and the do nots. Yeah. Then it also talks about the muscle of stress. If you don't know how to deal with stress properly, it can wreck the, 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 the most healthiest body in a matter of no time whatsoever. Mm -hmm. So we talk about things like that. We talk about discovering your why. Why do I need to stay healthy? Mm -hmm. Why should I go ahead and get this workout in yeah. and not go home and lay on the sofa and just you know eat garbage and just become a, a piece of nothing, <laughs> you know. Yeah. So, and that's it, it feels good mm -hmm. sitting on the sofa, yeah, and eating snacks and becoming a piece of nothing. But the fact of the matter is, you're not going to live long doing that. No, you got to find your reason to why to stay alive. Yeah. If you, if you, we are our own corporation. If you don't move right. your rust, you don't move your rust. Then the other part of it, if you don't have health, you can't obtain wealth. Mm -hmm. You know, if I trash my body, who's going to take care of my wife? Yeah. and the responsibility of our household. Who's gonna do that? Yeah. Who's gonna take care of my grandkids? And you know, where's the financial support? Because when you get sick, you get poor real fast. Yeah, because that, 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 that oh, hospital's man, gonna drain you. Hospital love to work on sick people. Mm -hmm. So don't get sick. Yeah. Preventive maintenance. So that's what we talk about in Fit at Any Age. And it's available at LeeHaney.com. You can go to my website, L-E-E. H-A-N-Y.com, mm -hmm. or you can also get the book on uh, Barnes and Nobles. You can yep. get it there. You can get it on Amazon, on Kindle. It's there. Go to my website, and I have a wealth of just some awesome materials there mm -hmm. that people can learn and grow from. Yeah, the um, the uh, you also have your Instagram at the Lee Hain, the oh, yeah. official Lee Haney. Right, right. You can go there. Go to my website. You'll see all the information. Facebook, Twitter. I'm on all of them. Yeah. You know, Instagram. I don't have enough of that stuff there. <laughs> I, I let my text do all of that. So man, that, that's a whole other world. Oh, oh yeah, because it's, it's to, totally different. That's a dot-com deal. Oh, I yeah. love the dot-comers, man. My son and daughter and my text, they take good care of that for me. Yeah, the, um, but a lot of people don't know there's a, what, what you've done is you learned how to grow the tissue. Mm -hmm. And so sometimes, like with my athletes, I have a problem growing them. Because the, the strength, just because you're strong, doesn't mean you're big. And just because you're big, don't mean exactly. You yeah. know, it's kind of it's kind of a different. Well, we, we're using the same tools, right? But we're getting a different result. A different result, you know. And I tell guys too, particularly in my sport, don't think you have to use eight million pounds to grow a muscle. Mm -hmm. Now, what I love about the science of what you do, you're able to stimulate fast twitch fiber without using eight million pounds. Mm -hmm. You know, by doing explosive type of ballistic training, mm -hmm. you can use much lighter weight and stimulate fast twitch fiber mm -hmm. for size. Yep. We did that with, with, with Evander Holyfield. Yep. And still having you to use a ton of weight. So how, how did you go in from bodybuilding? How'd you get into training athletes? Well, you know, the first one, I guess the first one that I worked with was Evander. I had a chance to sort of be around him and get to know him and his team call upon me mm -hmm. when they wanted to take from cruiserweight to heavyweight. Well, I can put weight on you. I can make you bigger. Mm -hmm. I can make you stronger, but can I give you explosive power? Yeah. That was a different kind of animal. Yeah. First thing I did, I picked up the telephone and I said, Fred, Dr. <laughs> Fred Hatfield, Dr. Squat. I never did this before, Fred. What do we need to do? Mm -hmm. And as you know, Fred is like the missing link he yeah. makes no sense. He looked like Elmer Fudd, <laughs> and yet he squatted over a thousand pounds when he was 46 years old. That's crazy. It doesn't make sense. Yeah. But Fred got his degree from Russia. Oh, uh, okay. So Fred, he is one of those, he was one of the most He understood strength science. That's right. That's what he understood. I told her, but didn't as yeah. much. But after being tutored under Fred for so many years, and I lived in California, yeah. you know, he was there at the Weeder Center, plus when he moved to Atlanta, mm -hmm. he was there, and matter of fact, uh, his office was there in my facility. Mm -hmm. So we spent a lot of time together. So Fred helped me tweak that program. I knew how to feed him, how to give him supplements, but how to, uh, but in, in learning how to use the right movements, mm -hmm. plyos and that sort of thing, 
That's what free came. Yeah, it's totally it's a, it's a it's a tool. It's the same tools, different world. Different world, same tools, different world. Yeah. You know, once we got them down, hey man, the rest is history. Mm -hmm. We used for the first time anaerobic threshold training was used. Yeah. That's a event was the first to ever do that. Yeah, people don't even understand there's different ways to go about cardio. It depends on which right. energy system. Like you're going to use a totally different energy system when you're That's boxing right. versus when you're like a, a sprinter. That's right. Two or, different things. Or versus like a cross country person. You mm -hmm. don't need to be going out running miles if you're nope. going to. If you're going to be in the rain three minutes, yeah. you need to be able to put out three minutes at the max and one minute to high intensity effort. I mean, crazy too. Almost like wrestling. Yeah. Wrestler, man, good gracious. Yeah, these wrestlers will go run Woo! all day long and they learn how to pace themselves. That's, that's exactly right. Instead of, instead of doing maximum intensity work for that time that they're going to be wrestling or that they're going to be boxing. There you go. And it leads back to functional training. Yeah. The functionality of what that particular athlete needs yeah. or that person needs. Yeah, functional training is not always standing on a boshi ball trying nope. to balance. Nope. It's what that sport needs to be successful. Mm -hmm. So... Um, the so as far as that goes, then we go from function. I'm sorry, we had someone walk in, kind of <laughs> kind of knocked us off track. But um, now, so who would you train? You train Shannon Sharp, football. Yeah, right. Train Shannon. Uh, in many ways, we did a similar type of workout for him mm -hmm. because, and again, he had to be explosive. Yep. You know, not you know, you don't squat a you don't squat a five hundred pound guy on the field. So why use a five hundred pound? Mm -hmm. So we still have to make sure that what he did for his leg was explosive, chest explosive. Even as you know, with a bench press, it really doesn't make sense mm -hmm. because you take your core muscle out of the deal. When you're fighting with a guy on the field while you're a lineman, yeah. you're pushing and you're moving the whole body, mm -hmm. not laying on your butt mm -hmm. on your back pushing something up, yeah. let you land on the ground and got knocked on your butt, yeah. then you're pushing something up. Yeah. So that is a wrong movement. Mm -hmm. And that's why I, I like to see what I, when Hammer came out with that floor-based jammer, yep. mm -hmm. makes sense. Mm -hmm. Because you take your core with you mm -hmm. as you're forcing, as you're using chest force. Mm -hmm. See, so a lot of things, functionality, it really just takes thinking. Thinking. Thinking it through, not just seeing what, the see what they do form. and stuff like that. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. And sometimes they, they'll probably need a, a good base. That's right. Then, you know, sometimes I think people want to go from, I, I call it general, uh, directed, and specific. Yeah. So, yeah. so people want to jump to the specific w without starting with a good base. That's right. Then, then we, once we get the good base built, then we can go ahead and kind of start directing training. Then we kind of get more specific. Exactly. I, I uh, it was just funny. I had a chance to meet and have a conversation with Phil Fitzer, mm -hmm. the world's strongest man. Yeah. And uh, uh, when they had the short strength here in Atlanta some years ago, and Phil said, "Hey Lee, guess what? Man, I benched four hundred and five pounds today." Phil was happy he benched four hundred and five pounds. That's nothing for me. Yeah. But I cannot pull a truck <laughs> or pick up one of these. Stones oh, and yeah. horse it over a whole another <laughs> level of strength. Yeah, because uh, I had a hundred and fifty pound sandbag and then here I was trying to pick it up <laughs> yeah, like that. Yeah. Or give me some hundred and fifty pound dumbbells, I can go yeah, over there and bench. It's so, a total so. different kind of a deal. Yeah. You know, and so sometimes they make too much out of a bench press. Yeah. Or too much out of a squat. Mm -hmm. You know, so all goes back to functionality. So yeah, man, I've been busy doing a lot of things. We got the games. Yeah, the games. yeah, let's talk about the league games. I love games. that because in the games, man, we can showcase everything. Mm -hmm. uh, year or so ago, we had uh, games included. Powerlifting, strongman, arm wrestling, obstacle races. We always have the Fit Kid Challenge. Mm -hmm. We are trying to grow it in such a way that it'll, it'll include all of the different sports. Wrestling, we want to add all of that to it. but. Mm -hmm. This year, the games will take place in October mm -hmm. uh, at the Georgia International. Uh, well, we, we got two different venues yeah. that we're looking at. We sort of haven't locked in yet, but I'll rather everybody go to the website, LeeHaney.com. Yeah, that'll give you all the information. Uh, get all the information there. They can go to LeeHaneyGames.com. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. You get all the information there concerning the events that we're going to be doing. It's been very successful. We're now going into the fifth year. So we gotta decide which activities we'll be adding 
That's coming I'm rolling in the quick. Future. Yeah, it's, it's rocking and rolling, man. We, we're excited about it. Got a lot of great people involved. Allen Vision Ford, Paramount Acceptance. We have Power Block on board with us. Steve Harvey was our title sponsor for uh, three consecutive years. Mm -hmm. High Tech Pharmaceuticals, they were our sponsors. Just got some uh, Allen Vision Ford here locally in Georgia, mm -hmm. one of our sponsors. And uh, uh, and then we, uh, of course, had Benefit Planning Resources. Just a lot of awesome people out there doing some things with us, man, and making this event go. Then it's under my 501, uh, 501c3, mm -hmm. which is a nonprofit organization, Haynes Harvest House, okay. where I do mentoring. We do mentoring program for boys. Okay. So we've had that since 1996. Ooh, got your hands full. Oh, right. yeah, man. I got some great people that help with all of these things, man. I, it's an army. I don't do it by myself, and thank God I got people who care. Yeah, because I, I sit there thinking about Lee Haney games, you got the book going on, you got <laughs> yeah. all those traveling because oh, you just man. got back from uh, one of your friends' funeral. And, uh, I sure yeah. did, man. It's, it's, been, it's been crazy. Man. Yeah, you're all over the place. Yeah, yeah. but hey, I, I love it, man. I'm doing what I love to do. You know, anytime you can live out your passion, yeah. it's like you're not working. You know, yeah, I, I love I love having these kids. They say, Jared, how how you do this all the time? <laughs> when, when, when you see someone succeed, or yeah. when, for me, it's like when I see someone do something they thought they could not do, right. mm -hmm. a spark goes off of them. Yeah, and yeah. and you can change them. Right, that's right. You man. know, you can change it for a long time, and and get them get them to listen, to buy in. Then we can start teaching. You that's know, right. it, like I learned, like I told you earlier. I still do dumbbell flies, and I teach my kids here how to do dumbbell flies, like you did in your uh, totally awesome right. Lee Haney video back in the day. <laughs> right. I used to pop that VHS and watch it, take some notes, and, and go over and stuff wow. like that. Okay. And um, and that's kind of how I started. So my muscles a little bit more developed. Some of my kids' muscles here mm -hmm. because I started doing a little bit more bodybuilding stuff right. when I when I was younger. And some of these kids got little arms. I had a kid with arms about that size. Mm -hmm. uh, Bench four or five for two. Wow, ain't that something? <laughs> and so, ain't about the size, is it? No. And so once I learned how to create strength without creating size, you know, because like we'll do powerlifting competitions, you got to learn how to keep. For me, it's learning how to keep a kid light so they stay athletic. Yes, exactly. And so then I try to give them as much strength and power as I can, mm -hmm. so that so that they can have what I call relative strength, or what's known as relative, how much they squat compared to how much they weigh, right. and mm -hmm. stuff like that. Then once we get strength to a certain level, then we can be more explosive and work on different qualities of strength, right. instead of just working on just absolute strength all the time. Mm -hmm. If we work on relative strength, and then if we work on different characteristics, like we do a lot of squatting with a tendo unit, mm -hmm. and so we're trying to develop a strength speed. Right. So we're, we're lifting weights at a certain uh, meters per second in mm -hmm. order to yield specific strength response. Right. Wow, that's uh, incredible. <laughs> and so that's kind of making these kids grow and develop. And then you see the wall, I've right. been over mm -hmm. uh, 45 uh, scholarship signings. Awesome, man. That's, that's off the chain. And so I don't really deal with uh, the average adults, but um, I've always found that growing the muscle tissues it, it's totally, it's totally. And early different. the better, you know. Early yeah. the better, and that's what you're doing. You're building, building athletes. Yeah, because the um, I've had a little. Once they start about eight or nine, they really become strength freaks later mm -hmm. on, you know. But you got it just like you did early on. Yeah. You know, I think that sets. I tell people when you when you train a kid at that age, it's kind of like wiring a house before you put in the sheetrock. Exactly. You, yeah. you, you're setting up the nervous system a lot better, and to say the functionality of it and how it fires and everything else. Because like when a kid plays soccer, mm -hmm. golf, gymnastics, and tennis, all they're picking up characteristics from all those sports: hand-eye coordination and, and their feet and their movements and stuff like that. I think sometimes when a kid specializes way too early, mm -hmm. you know, like uh, I heard a, yeah. a famous strength coach talk and say, um, you know, these kids that do hockey, hockey, hockey the entire time. They can't even walk and chew gum. Exactly. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. And it, you know, it's amazing. And uh, we, I have a class called Fit in the Age, sort of a spring offspring from my book, mm -hmm. where I'm training people that are 50, 60, 70, close to 80 years old in the class. Mm -hmm. One of my clients in particular is a world class uh, runner, mm -hmm. running straight ahead, you know, perfect technique, great. But then we started, uh, we, she started to participate 
in the fit in the eighties class, we were using the exercise balls mm -hmm. where you actually doing the lateral tosses and doing wood chops and squat tosses with the ball mm -hmm. and drills where you're going backwards with the ball and you you know you got a slight jog going on yeah. backwards and you come another way and she was just, just with the ball she was missing the ball she would drop it every other throw because like you were saying she wasn't used to that reaction yeah ball coming out of it like that but she was just used to running yeah so it sort of gave her mind and nervous system something different yeah, and, and that's very critical because, very you know, like, like now, especially the 50 and the age, we're like you said, 50s and 60s. Mm -hmm. They got to be aware. Yeah. They need to be able to bounce. They need to be able to catch themselves. Like if you're catching a ball, it's like catching yourself when you fall. That's right. That's right. Reaction. Yeah. And so, um, and, and I think half or most of the injuries when they get older, like a broken bone, then that enables them, like you said. If, that's if right. You don't want to be sitting on that couch. You sure don't. You sure don't. Yeah. You got you to gotta keep that blood flowing because it goes to the... That's right. <laughs> if you always see, if you don't circulate, you don't percolate. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, and last set, best set, too, last right? Last set, best set, that's right. <laughs> all, all, all the uh, Lee Haney sayings. Yes. The, yes. Um, the, as, as far as, like, a, a bodybuilding for some of these younger kids, a lot of these kids want to get their arms. Could you take them through, like, an arm routine? Well, arm routine is pretty simple stuff. Do you, um, did you go slow in the eccentric phase? Or did you just? No, I would. I would always, you know, come up, mm -hmm. flex at the top, come down with control. I didn't come down real slow. I would just, you know, come up, sort of explode. Kind of watch, watch the muscle, right? In, in your the brain, muscle, in the brain, connect the mind and the muscle together. Mm -hmm. So normally, rep, repetition range was always around eight. Mm -hmm. Did you just go till it burned, or? No, no, I didn't. I just, you know, I didn't have to do because you got different movements. The barbell curl which you can cheat with that too. Mm -hmm. You know, you would keep the reps limited to around six to eight mm -hmm. pyramid and add a little weight for different sets. So if you was gonna do like a set that you do light and you, your last set, your best set, so that'd be your heaviest? Yeah, the last set would be the heaviest set. Yeah. And when I say heavy, it wouldn't, I wouldn't stop. It wouldn't go below five reps. Yeah. I always kept around six to eight reps. Yeah, and some people, some people there's such thing as too heavy. That's too heavy. When you sling and you lose form, that's that's too heavy. Yeah, it's and it doesn't take that. You can tear your tear your joints up by doing stupid stuff like that. Bicep tear. That's totally unnecessary. And, and like what we were talking about earlier, it's not always you want to stimulate the muscle. That's right. And so it's not like when we're lifting. More is not better. Yeah, we're always lifting heavy weights, but we don't get very big. So heavy weight necessarily does not make muscle grow. No, you just you just use the weights to stimulate. Mm -hmm. And you see. Demand and supply. Yeah, because I try to tell these kids, they're they're trying to do the whole stack on cable curls, and I, I said, look, you need to feel the muscle instead of instead of just, they want to just go do the action. Yeah. yeah. And, and so and so sometimes it, it, they can't get that weight broken out in their head. So that teaching deal with kids is very very important. Yeah, because they yeah, they yeah yeah because yeah, a lot a lot of them know more than we do. That's right. <laughs> So I got Miss Haney out there. She's ready to oh, go okay, shopping yep. and get some food. So, oh yeah, so yeah, the boss lady. Hungry. The boss lady. She's sitting the car waiting on me to get so, there. So Haley, I really appreciate you stopping by. Well, it's always an honor, man. Doing, always an honor doing a podcast. So let's tell everybody again where they can find you. Yeah, you, if anyone is interested in uh, going through the certification program, mm -hmm. it's called the International Association of Fitness Science. You can get information. You go to LeeHaney.com and go right into the link. Uh, you know, that's for the certification. You want to know something about the Lee Haney game? You can go to LeeHaneyGames.com. It's just what it says, LeeHaneyGames.com. And also follow me on Instagram, Facebook. I'm, I'm on all those different uh, social media networks. Yeah. So, hey, I love to hear from you. I got diff other different things going on, too. So whatever you want to know. I got it. <laughs> <laughs> so thank you. Lee, I appreciate what you do, Hey, man. I thank appreciate you, you Lee, because, you know, it's like we told you earlier, I learned from you, and so I'm just trying to pass okay. on good knowledge. Well, you know the heck of a job, you, so. you got athletes to prove it, baby. <laughs> <laughs> That's what it's okay. about, helping That's someone else be about. better than what I was. That's right. That's so right. Uh, thank you all for watching. Thank you all for listening. Um, and thanks, Lee, again. I thank appreciate you. it. Y'all have a good day. All right. That was good, Lee. All right, brother. That's good. Hey, Very good. Hey, thanks.